Hey everyone, Cherry is here. Finally back with the first video of the new year. This is my February 2023 plan with me, where as always, I am super excited to share with you my bullet journal spreads for the upcoming month in my new notebook. With a month long observations and awareness, February is often known as a month dedicated to love. I also happened to attend one of my best friend's wedding just a few days ago and prior to that, I was able to contribute in the design and some stationery pieces which had floral motif. And so I was really inspired to make a theme for my February setup from that special event. We have several spreads to make in this setup so let's start right away. A great way to set the mood of a new monthly setup is to create a cover and I will be doing a full spread with painted illustration using gouache. It might look pretty intimidating from the preview but we will make it step by step and before painting, let's mix some of the colors I will be using. I wanted to have fresh and spring floral color palette and since I will be painting several flowers, I am mixing my colors one at a time. For the first flower, I took carmine, yellow, and white to create this red-orange color in three tones since I'm also aiming for a semi-realistic appearance to my illustrations. I started with the mid-tone and then the lighter and darker ones by just adding a bit of white and black respectively. I wanted to do a floral pattern for this cover and I always start by sketching my composition before the painting process. But since I already made a very light sketch, I will briefly explain how I drew them and came up with the placements because it also took me a lot of erasures figuring out how I wanted them to look like. So I began by finding my center point on the page to the right drew a rectangular shape which I initially thought of writing my February title but that changed in the end <laughs> and from there I drew a cluster of flowers on the lower left by drawing circles first as a guide I just repeated that as a flipped version on the upper right of the rectangle then I also drew some leaves on them it would also be easier to rotate the notebook itself as you remember your hand movements when you drew that first cluster. I also drew bigger roses and smaller flowers with stems on the bottom and top edges and a couple more clusters on the upper part of the page to the left. And after that, I can start drawing the details of each flower. Now let's paint the petals of our first flower with the mixture we made earlier. There are different ways to paint this. You can either block the whole flower with the mid-tone first and build the shadows and highlights later. Or start with the darker areas which are the inner parts of each petal like what I'm doing here and add the mid and lighter tones after. I personally think this technique was easier for me to separate each petal from the beginning since it can be difficult sometimes to see when the pencil guidelines are covered with the paint since they are opaque. After adding these tones, I am still adding a few more layers, trying to blend them evenly and bring more depth to the whole flower. And when I'm satisfied with it, I can then paint the pistil and stamen with this yellow color. And that's pretty much it for this flower. But we are doing a pattern here, so I'm just painting the very same on the other clusters. I'm going to show you another quick process here, and it's pretty much the same technique no matter what the angle of the flower is.
There will be four of this specific flower in this whole composition and painting them in one go before proceeding to the other flowers will make it easier to finish too so you can get the exact color and don't need to go back and forth cleaning your brush. The second one is a white flower with longer petals. Painting white flowers can be tricky and I always used to shy away from white flowers but once you have learned some basic steps, you will have fun painting them. Doing something for the first time can be scary too but it does not mean you are not capable and you will be surprised about your progress. If you have a white flower reference, the very thing you will need to look for is color aside from white. So here I mixed light gray for the shadows and white with a hint of yellow that I painted in between the petals. If the pistol and stamen is yellow for example, you can also see a tinge of yellow reflecting on the petals. So I added a bit more yellow to the light gray mixture and layered the inner petals with it. Onto our third flower, I will be adding white to the mixture I used for the first flower to create another shade of pink for my pink roses. Since the drawing has several petals that are quite close to each other, especially on the center, it can be hard to notice that I painted them with three tones. But yeah, regardless of the style of the flowers, I am still doing the same technique. And also, I won't be showing the process for all the flowers to each variation, otherwise this video will take forever to finish. <laughs> Now we're painting the next roses with this peach color by adding some yellow to our existing mixture. We are doing the steps likewise to these bigger roses that are part of the clusters as well as the younger ones. I was planning to paint the roses on the top and bottom of this page with another color but I just went for white again in the end. I thought it has a lot of pinks already so painting these with white would balance everything and I really like the way they are painted. Now that the flowers are done, we can proceed to the leaves. I just added green and white to the existing peach tone on the center of my palette to create this nice moss green color. I am so so in love with this shade. And here I blocked all the leaves first so they look like abstract leaf shapes. And I will be adding details to them, but at this point, I already thought of leaving them like this. But in the end, I still went with adding the details using a darker shade.
If you remember my latest sketchbook tour video, I actually took inspiration as well from one of my floral paintings and I'm doing the same style in here for the leaves. I enjoyed experimenting ways to paint the leaves and I like this one a lot that is different from how I paint them before. So what I do is painting the midrib first and I'm not technically painting the veins or the structure of them but what I do is just painting small curvy strokes to form the shape of the blade but not entirely covering everything. You might be wondering what the blue paint I poured in my palette is for in the beginning, but I wanted to add a background color to this. I was debating with myself if I still want it because it honestly looked lovely already with the white background, but I changed so many things already from my original concept, so I still added this mauve orchid color by mixing red, white, and a bit of yellow and blue. I added the background leaving a curvy shape unpainted on the left side. This can be quite tedious to be honest, but I truly enjoyed the process. It was relaxing for me. My technique was painting the bigger spaces first and slowly fill in the thin margins around the flowers and leaves. Alright, before I show you a better look of it, let's do the February title already. I added this piece of ripped watercolor paper to add a bit of texture to the spread. Like I said, I am supposed to have the title on the right side when I drew the rectangle guide and have it cut out after but I'm just moving it here. I wrote February in this serif font style called Higuen Elegant Serif and I'm using my Sakura Pigomicron to write it with. Then I tried writing with a gel pen this time just to have a different feel <laughs> and below is a quote or a verse rather from the scripture that says let all that you do be done in love. That is from the 1st Corinthians chapter 16 verse 14. There are so many encouraging verses and passages in the Bible indeed. Okay, that is finally my February cover spread all done. That was a long process for sure, but I really hope you like it. We can now move on to my next spread. I am pretty experimental with this layout this time where I usually create my calendar spread but I started on the page to the left to set up some self-care ideas and important dates section. I decided to go for a very simple and easy layout and I started by writing the titles in two different fonts. And then I'm using this muted purple cream color highlighter to draw a shaded box for each. I still wanted to add a bit of decor into this page by using this sticker washi tape from the washi tape shop. This is from their petals and parchment collection that fits the theme perfectly. On the next page will be for my goals and focus sections and I simply wrote the titles again.
Then using this beige color highlighter, I divided the gold section into three subsections to write off specific objectives for the month as well as drawing thick lines on the focus section. I'm also adding spaces to write actions that I need to do to be able to accomplish my goals and some round stickers with different shades of pink. This year, I'm really allowing myself to just use whatever materials I have here. But keep in mind that you don't need to have all these stuff to recreate a particular spread or page that we are making in this setup. You can absolutely draw the flower stickers in your own style or if you have floral stickers with different designs, that would be great to use as well. I still have this leftover paper from one of my setups last year so I'm cutting a piece from here to use as a background for my monthly plans header. Using a double sided tape, I am pasting it all the way to the edge of the page and then I'm writing or painting rather the title on it. <laughs> my white gel pen that I usually use decided to act up today. And since my other white gel pen was out of reach, I just use white gouache for now. And lastly, I added a bit of shimmer on it using this gold watercolor. And by the way, if you're interested in any particular supply that I'm using in this setup, you can always find the list on the video description as well as my discount codes. Modern Invitations has parchment paper in their envelope so I thought it would be nice to add it in this setup so I'm cutting it like a size of the page with a half centimeter allowance that I could fold and attach to the page later on. But before I permanently do that, I used some washi tapes for the meantime to keep it in place temporarily just in case I mess up since I'm going to draw on top of it. I took out this dip pen that I usually use to practice calligraphy, but this time I'm using it to create a line drawing of gold roses and a little February calendar. I inserted a paper behind it with my pencil drawing so I could just trace them over. If you don't have something like this, I think painting it with a small detail brush will do, but I'm not sure with gold gel pens if they show up nicely, but you can always test it out for yourself to see how it looks for you. But if you have a dip pen like this and want to follow the same steps, my tip is to not put too much gold watercolor or ink on the nib to prevent it from sudden spillage. You can gently tap the pointed end a few times on a surface to see if it spills before using it. And always make sure that your gold watercolor has a nice watery consistency, but not too dry nor too watery that it is overflowing on the page. This was definitely one of my favorites in this setup because I personally find it so satisfying. I'm so glad I didn't mess it up so I just glued the folded edge after onto the page, rounded the corners with a puncher, and we are finally done with this whole spread with an extra parchment page for my monthly calendar. I think this turned out to be a fun and unique idea and I'm looking forward to using it. Moving on again to the next spread is for my wellness trackers. I am making my mood tracker on the left page. I decided to add this watercolor paper again with deckled edges. Then I'm going to draw these flowers and leaves with a fine liner. It's like my personal coloring page and I kept everything minimal here. I played around with different shapes and sizes and I didn't really spend too much working on it. Except of course from making sure it has a total of 28 flower and leaf elements.
Then I'm writing the mood tracker's title on the bottom and numbered each element after since I always forget that when I'm setting up a tracker like this. As much as I wanted to fill this with the paints and color palette I used for the whole theme, I just decided to go for something more accessible like brush pens since I will be cleaning my paint palette after. So I have three shades of pink for the flowers and three shades of green for the leaves that represent three of my moods. When it's mostly filled, I think I will also paint the background with gouache, but we will see. Alright, next is my habit trackers, but before that, I took out my watercolors to add a wash of pink background to the page. I am also bringing back my interactive habit trackers. Yay! <laughs> I always had fun filling those in, so in this theme, I think it would be fun as well to incorporate it. I'm going to make a little parchment envelope here, again inspired by the wedding invitations. I already cut it out according to the size I want. This also took me two attempts, so I have the measurements written down using the dot grid spacing for your reference. So I'm just gluing the edges of the flaps to form the envelope and attach it on the upper left of the page. For my trackers, I pre-cut these white papers with 12 by 8 dot spaces and will fit in the envelope nicely. To match my mood tracker, I am drawing all my habit tracker cards with a black pen as well. I drew a border around lined botanicals, 28 round shapes using a stencil and the habit titles on top. And here are all my habit trackers, very simple and minimal. I just inserted them in this mini envelope and decorated it a bit with this sticker washi tape again. I have the yours truly lettering on the top and a rose sticker to seal it. Then I'm just writing the habit trackers title next to the envelope. I want to paint a simple illustration of white flowers and leaves to add a bit of color to the whole spread. I must say I struggled blending the colors here and the shadows being quite harsh in my eyes, but I stayed patient with it and it finally looked better somehow when I painted the center of the flowers and the leaves. I am using the same colors in my palette by the way, and I tried to keep my color scheme less so I didn't need to mix new colors and also to tie everything together. But after the painting is done, I am including this February favorites below. This is a fun section to write down what I enjoyed this month such as my favorite movie, TV show, food, activity, and song. There are so many categories you can include but I listed all those down and drew the boxes accordingly using a highlighter. I'm sure there will be more than one item I could write on each, so these boxes will be spacious enough. Now that is all for my mood and habit trackers and February favorites. We're moving on again with the next spreads and these are my weekly spreads for February. 
I'm going to do Dutch doors this month. It's always a time to switch to this layout when everything gets busy again for me. So I started cutting all three pages and also leaving a small rectangular tab on top of each page. I'm going to paint a purple border around the whole spread, so I attach some washi tapes matching the size of the Dutch door pages and painted them all the way to the edges using the same color from our cover. If you have a colored paper or if you can print them out, it will be easier too as you can just glue them but I still have some mixture of the color I want left on my palette anyway, so that is what I'm using. I also painted the tabs with different colors, and to decorate the header of each page, I'm using these floral washi tapes. I really love these designs by Anna of Journal Away, and I actually used them as well in my February setup last year. Now for the layout itself, I'm having a mini calendar over here. And after that, I'm writing all the dates and days for my daily sections. I don't know why I'm still using this gel pen honestly because it has been skipping a lot. And I forgot that I have sweaty hands so there's quite a mess here. <laughs> I guess I'm still a fine liner person after all. Anyway. The whole weekly layout is highly inspired by my October theme last year and I also enjoyed that. I loved being able to use these highlighters to add color in my daily boxes. I wanted to add some more verses here from the scripture that I read previously. This one is from Isaiah chapter 43 verse 1 that says, Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. I really love that verse. And aside from reading, I have been watching the series called The Chosen. And this verse was the first one I heard and it really made more impactful. The way I wrote it was not the best for sure, but that's fine. I was ready to call this spread completed, but something felt missing. So the next day, I searched for my Sakura Jelly Roll white gel pen to draw these lined botanical and floral design on top of the painted borders. I just drew them freely and messily, and I really liked how it turned out this time. And that is finally my weekly spread layout. We have one more spread to go, but before that, I wanted to take this time to share with you today's video sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community that offers thousands of inspiring classes for curious and creative people like us. You may know Skillshare for classes in photography, film and video editing, and illustration. But did you know Skillshare has hundreds of career-focused classes too? There are so many skills I'm sure you can find a class about on the platform. I recently completed a class called Creative Mindfulness, Easy Exercises to Find Magic and Inspiration Everywhere by Dan Dan Liu. It was an excellent and valuable class that taught me how to slow down and pay attention in this fast-paced world through fun and mindful exercises. I especially love the viewfinding a la Corita Kent, but I enjoyed every exercise for all five senses. It is a 7-day challenge and you can absolutely choose a schedule that works for you. I am learning so much in this community and I'm already on to my next class called Productivity for Artists, Organizing Yourself for Success by Brooke Glaser. I am already getting helpful tips especially for time management, which is one of my goals this year, to make more time for the things that fulfill me. And because Skillshare is sponsoring this video, the first 1,000 of my subscribers will get one month free trial of Skillshare by using my link on the video description. I highly encourage you guys to check it out because there are so many takeaways in these classes I mentioned. I will also provide the links to these classes for you below. Happy learning! Thank you so much Skillshare for sponsoring this video. 
but back to the setup is the last spread i usually end my setups with my weekly spreads in my previous ones this time i thought of bringing back some type of a summary spread called a month in review to reflect on several things but let's quickly paint these washes of pink watercolor on the corners and one more clustered floral illustration to decorate this spread. I have similar flowers here such as the white petal and peach rose, which by the way being cut off in the process because my memory card just got full, but I hope you already got the idea from the first painting. Then I also added a couple different flowers this time, like a chrysanthemum and a purple flower that I just invented. <laughs> I don't know what it is called, if there is actually one existing like this. And lastly, I just made it the same style of leaves around them. Then I also added this purple paper for my spread title with the same design as my monthly plan spread. I'm dividing these pages with 5 questions such as what I'm grateful for this month, my top 5 accomplishments, what did I do well, biggest lessons, and how can next month be better. The last thing I'm including here is to rate how February was for me with 10 as the highest. I am going to write that under this paper tag with a rose design on it. And that's pretty much everything for my February 2023 bullet journal setup. Let's have a final flip through of everything we did here. I know this was a very long process, especially for the cover, but other than that, I like that there are more simpler layouts this time, so I really hope you enjoyed this theme as much as I do and got some ideas for your own February setup. It's my new favorite and I love how refreshing it looks it makes me already look forward to spring or in my country the transition of cold to warm weather remember to like this video and subscribe to the channel for more journaling and plan with me videos in the future but thank you all so much for watching have an amazing month of february and i will see you all on my next video bye everyone